I heard your call for no justice, no peace. Your peace is sincerely needed as I work to deliver justice on behalf of this young man. Well, there you have Baltimore City, or Baltimore City State Attorney Marilyn Mosby saying now that they have enough probable cause to file criminal charges against six police officers in the death case of Freddie Gray. Hello, I'm John Bachman. And I'm Miranda Khan. That includes murder charges for one. Here's more about what we learned today. State's Attorney Marilyn Mosby says, again, six officers and the police custody death of Freddie Gray have now been charged. One officer faces a second degree murder charge while the other officers face manslaughter or assault charges among other charges. Mosby says the officers failed to get great medical help even though he requested it repeatedly after he was arrested April 12th. Yeah and we have the charges Miranda and this is coming from the Baltimore Sun of the officers who have now been charged in this case Caesar Goodson 45 he is the one with the second degree murder charge, Officer William Porter, 25 years old, he's have faces that manslaughter charge. Mm -hmm. uh, Lieutenant Brian Rice also faces a manslaughter charge. Uh, Alicia White, female involved in this, also faces uh, involuntary manslaughter. Officer Edward Nero and Officer Garrett Miller also face second degree assault charges and misconduct amid all of them. And what this was really centered on was the fact that Freddie Gray was apparently calling for help from the back of that police van and they did right. not deliver the help that the Baltimore City State Attorney Marilyn Mosby says was adequate. Right, and Mosby herself, as we're reporting on our Newsmax mm -hmm. website, comes from five generations of police officers. Yep. And she's saying that the charges against these six officers should in no way damage the relationship between police and prosecutors in Baltimore. We'll see what happens next week. It was a very emotionally charged, I guess you mm -hmm. could say, news conference. Uh, we have some more of what the uh, Baltimore City State Attorney Marilyn Mosby had to say. Let's take a listen. Lieutenant Rice, Officer Miller, and Officer Nero failed to establish probable cause for Mr. Gray's arrest as no crime had been committed by Mr. Gray. Mr. Gray suffered a severe and critical neck injury as a result of being handcuffed, shackled by his feet, and unrestrained inside of the BPD wagon. To the youth of this city, I will seek justice on your behalf. This is a moment. This is your moment. So this is your moment. I'm not exactly sure what she meant by this, but I, obviously speaking to the same folks who were involved in the protest, uh, urging them to stay calm and promising that justice will be served here. Right, and then we're also hearing reports that his actual arrest was actually illegal as well. That That's right, she mentioned that. Right. So also going on, uh, Baltimore Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake had this to say in regards to Freddie Gray's death. Let's take a listen. We will get justice for Freddie Gary. Believe you me, we will get justice. And we're going to do it because we're going to work together. Because if, with the nation watching, three black women at three different levels can't get justice and healing for this community, you tell me where we're going to get it in our country. Hmm. And those two other women that the mayor is talking about are Marilyn Mosby, who we just heard from, the Maryland state's attorney investigating Gray's death, and the new U.S. Attorney General, Loretta Lynch. He was just sworn in. Yeah, so, of course, much more to come on this today, and uh, new reports are coming in seemingly on the hour about uh, new information that was leaked from this investigation. There's way been so much speculation right. into this investigation. I mean, just the other day we were talking about ABC having this report that supposedly there was a man that was in the van with Freddie Gray at the mm -hmm. time, could hear him banging his own head. There was there was speculation that maybe he did this intentionally. That it was he was pounding his head up yeah. against a bolt that was in the van. Of course, that is not what we're hearing today. Mosby was very careful to say in that news conference, this was not an indictment. This is, these are criminal charges. They'll be charging documents that are public information now that will lay out the case that she's going to have to make to jurors mm -hmm. as well. That information is going to be parsed through today, and we'll find out more about why she feels like there's enough evidence here for mm -hmm. murder charges, not just manslaughter charges, but murder charges, uh, second-degree murder charges in this case against one of the officers. So we'll keep an eye on that. Much more to talk about as well. Miranda, let's turn our attention uh, to what happened in Philadelphia last night. Another protest there. More protesters on the street as these protests continue to spread. Several hundred gathered at Philadelphia City Hall to protest. They were loud but relatively peaceful. Police said they only had to make three or four arrests. Folks like Daphne Matthews spoke. Her son was shot fatally by a police officer in Chester, Pennsylvania, and says it should not have taken this long for others to feel like they got justice. It should not take a riot like Eric Garner or Baltimore for 
And we expect more protests today. It is May Day, the 1st of May. This happens around the world, but a lot of folks uh, with the Black Lives Matter and Hands Up, Don't Shoot uh, issues are taking this day to continue their protests as well. And a one-time ally of New Jersey Governor Chris Christie also now has pleaded guilty. We're hearing that David Wildstein has uh, pled guilty in the case in connection with the closures at the George Washington Bridge. Uh, he was in Newark in federal court today take, uh, making that plea. The pl those lanes were shut down in the fall of 2013 in what appears to be an act of public retribution. Christie had maintained that he knows nothing about those closures and didn't know anything about it beforehand. Wildstein uh, apparently is ready to cooperate with uh, prosecutors. And again, we'll have more on this case as well coming up later today. In Congress, a bill giving Congress a chance to, re to review the nuclear deal with Iran has stalled in the Senate. With presidential candidate Marco Rubio presiding over the Senate, Tom Cotton from Arkansas pushed for an up or down vote on several so-called poison pill amendments. I would say these are not poison pills. These are vitamin pills. They're designed to strengthen this legislation and strengthen the U.S. negotiating position. The amendments include one that would require Iran to recognize Israel's right to exist. Senator Bob Corker, chair of the Foreign Relations Committee, admits he was caught off guard by the move. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell may have to step in to move the bill forward. Senators in both parties tell Politico that he'll likely have to cut off the debate. Corker says he actually expects that to happen on Monday. In other news, a former FBI agent now stands accused of lying on the stand in the trial of a convicted mobster. Mr. Fitzpatrick adamantly maintains his innocence and he looks forward to challenging the government's accusations uh, as soon as possible. Robert Fitzpatrick, once second in command of the FBI's Boston office, faces perjury charges. He says he tried to persuade the FBI to terminate Whitey Bulger as an informant, but his bosses didn't listen. Prosecutors say he exaggerated the claim in an effort to sell copies of a book. And Miranda, nearly a week after that powerful earthquake that rocked Nepal, the search continues for new survivors. The death toll has now surpassed 6,200, and morgues are officially at capacity. Officials have ordered immediate cremations for a lot of the dead. Nepal's finance minister says it will take at least $2 billion to rebuild. More women and children have been rescued in Nigeria from the clutches of Boko Haram. The Nigerian army says that they were being held captive in a forest where the terror group has been hiding out earlier this week. About 300 women and girls were also free. And Tesla wants to go from powering cars to powering your house. The solution is in two parts. Part one, the sun. <laughs> we, we, have, we have this, this handy fusion reactor in the sky called the sun. Well, that was Elon Musk there, the chairman of Tesla. The second part he unveiled last night is what Musk calls the power wall, basically a big battery. Mm -hmm. In this nice case here, the solar-powered system would keep your lights on when the power goes out and could reduce your reliance on your local power company. The price of a system like this will start at around $3,000. Interesting. Hmm. Interesting stuff. What 3, do you think? I think it's pretty cool. I love seeing Well, you know me, though. I'm total sci-fi nerd. You're kind of a tech nerd. Yeah, no, I, I think See, it's cool. See, I just cool. admire it. You actually get it. Know how <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't go that far. I think it's, sometimes it can be overwhelming. We, were, we talked about this in the past, Those the smart therm, uh, thermostats in your house. Now we have this battery system. But there are new concerns about it. I was reading a story, Miranda, about uh, your coffee machine monitoring you. We had a report earlier about your iPhone knowing everywhere you go. Right. So you always got to be careful. I'm also They're almost people, too smart? Right. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, there's a lot. I think there's a limit on how smart things can go. Um, we are going to continue to keep our eye on the situation in Baltimore. Right. Again, uh, criminal charges brought against those six police officers mm -hmm. uh, in connection with the death of Freddie Gray. All right. Coming up later on Newsmax mm -hmm. Now, why these former Gitmo prisoners have turned into protesters. We'll break it all down with our Newsmax Now roundtable. But first, why Americans should care about the upcoming UK elections. Newsmax's Ken Chandler will join us live. And later, why this woman is now considered the world's coolest granny. She has over a million followers. All this and much, much more to come here on Newsmax Now. And a reminder of our new schedule, in case you haven't seen it, check it out. We have Midpoint coming on at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, followed by the Steve Malzberg Show at 5, The Daily Wrap at 7 o'clock, and Newsmax Prime at 8 o'clock, finishing it off with Ed Berliner for The Hardline at 9 o'clock. We'll be right back.